stance. Really? What's up? Uh, you gotta do the McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hand in hand. What do we got here? We've got Dogfish Head Straight Whiskey. Yeah. A gift from Lee Teague. Lee Teague, you make it. <laughs> A dogfish head. I am got to tell you, Lee, yeah. not looking forward to this. Hold on, hold on. Because up. dogfish head is the brewery. They are. They we are. did one of their whiskeys. Renowned for their Renowned. beer and like the craft scene and their innovators. Well, now they're huge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they were one of the first people to really give that craft beer scene legitimacy and enthusiasm. And, and double and down on pops. And momentum. Yeah. Well, and, and again, er, the early adopters for any kind of scene you're going to have people that are on the skinny end of the bell curve, mm -hmm. right? They're the, the early adopters, the ones that are most excited about the new, interesting, weird, different things. And in craft, it was this exploration of hops. And then you got the hop heads, more and more hops, more and more aggressive hops, until eventually you start having these, uh, back in the day, like these craft uh, beer festivals. And people would have just a plastic cylinder full of raw hops, and they would get the hoppiest IPA they could, and they'd pour it down the cylinder and suck out the beer at the mm. bottom. Because... Hops was just so new and interesting and different at that time. Ugh. But Dogfish Head getting into the world of whiskey. So this is a malt, 100% malt, okay. and they did it more traditionally whiskey style. Yeah, yeah. So instead of just taking a beer and making a whiskey out of it, yeah. they tried to make the process more of a whiskey process. All right, good on them. Because so we'll see. Well, it's been one of our, one of, one of the things we've noticed, it's not a blanket statement we can make about every brewery throwing their, um, you know, but it's throw, throwing their hat in the ring with whiskey. It's often. But often we find that the the whiskeys that breweries are making, they feel like kind of an afterthought. It's like, yeah, you made something because it was convenient. You had most yep. of the ingredients yes. and the equipment to do so. But you didn't really put, you know, everything into it that I think you're probably putting into your beers. Mm -hmm. There have been plenty of exceptions. Yeah, real spirits. I wish there were more exceptions. Yeah. Uh, but this is going to be my first time getting into this I'll one. tell you, the nose yeah. is a little more malt whiskey. Okay. And it's nice. It doesn't make me think beer immediately. Well, I'm getting like this nutty quality. They also it's... aged it in toasted barrels. Oh, oh, okay. The toasted barrels. I think this nuttiness, it's like mm -hmm. a toasty nuttiness, right? Toasted. Well, it's just lighter and more almondy. It is. It's it's um, light and delicate and toasted and nutty. It is. It's amaretto. It's the direction of amaretto. It's getting there. Not quite as... Um, no, but those are grain notes. Not as quite as too. sugary sweet as amaretto. Yeah, more grainy to your point than amaretto, but directionally. If you had amaretto granola. Maybe, yeah. Well, it wasn't candy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, again, very dry. But, dude. But buttery, but no weird funky beer notes. Buttery, hold on, I don't, don't want to bypass that buttery. It is um, delicate. It remains on the palate as it is on the nose. That kind of light. Delicate, easy, smooth. It's a smooth whiskey. It, it right? And by like, smooth means it's not, there's nothing burny. There's mm. nothing aggressive. 40%, that makes sense. This is more in the direction of an Irish whiskey for me. Mm. If I had to pick a category and someone poured this, I would be like, oh, this is an experimental Irish whiskey. Okay. Like Method and Madness runs, mm -hmm. where they're doing the weird barrels or the, right? I can see that. I mean, it's not Irish. No, no, no. It, what you're missing is that savory, rich, shortbread. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're also missing like the real deep malty notes in some of the Highland and space sides. Right. And the deep butterscotch, you get this weird, but it's not sugary sweet right. like the lighter Canadians or the, this is a unique animal. It's unique. And here, here's the thing. Oh. It's simple. It's simple and at 40% with the flavors that we're getting, mm -hmm. these feel like pretty unique flavors that I think that fits within the world of whiskey. This doesn't feel like a weird alien thing. Right. Um, these flavors fit in whiskey, but they're not common at all. And I know there's more that this whiskey has to offer, but it's not going to do it at 80 proof. Yeah. What should we compare this to? Because I can't think of a single comparison. Uh, I don't want to go back to the other dogfish head that we had because I really didn't like that one. Um, something I don't know. I mean, really, it's, see, it's not Irish. It's not Highland malt. Well, it's, like granola. it's not even American malt. Let's go for like a nutty granola, right? A nutty granola. What would be a nutty? It's got to be a no-name American spirit where there's like a, not a dominant category. Uh, that's them telling everybody that class is starting again. Okay. Uh, from the subreddit, this is from Goddamn Kids. 
<laughs> I've yet to jump into rye whiskeys, and I am looking for some recommendations from a few magnificent bastards out there. My gut is telling me to just grab a rye variant of some bourbons that I really enjoy. Is this a good strategy, or should I look out for any in particular for a good first time? Huh. That old overhaul we had yesterday, I don't think that's going to be a good representation of like a classic rye. But Whistlepig rye I think is a good one, but the rye variants of bourbons that he enjoys, that could be a good place to start, right? Yeah. A distillery where he, they know they make, he knows that they make bourbons that they like um, using the same tools and the same palette, the sensibilities. They could absolutely make a rye that you would enjoy too. That's a good place to start. Any other recommendations for a rye noob that wants to go exploring there? Something affordable, easy to get that you think would be a good representation of rye in the comments. I can't think of anything that tastes like this. No, it's unique. It's unique and I think it's interesting and I like it and I wish it was a, a higher proof because I would like to dig in a little bit more deeply into these flavors. I think they did a really nice job of making an interesting, respectable, nice, easy, friendly, but not boring whiskey. I give up on comparing it to anything reasonably. You defeated us, dogfish. <laughs> uh, I think um, a really glib uh, uh, interpretation. Friendly, not boring. Yeah. Friendly and unique. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which is actually kind of tricky to do. It is. Yeah. It is. Greg Bor Borrowy, 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 Borrowy. Greg, newbie question, but why do you make an infinity bottle? Is it to explore your own blend or is it to preserve the whiskey? Explore. It is, yeah. it is. I love that question because uh, everybody who's into it is like, infinity, infinity bottle, it's one of right. our best viewed episodes on the other channel. Yeah, it's up there. Um, but it is, what's the point? I mean, all the people I know uh, who just drink whiskey. Let me tell you my point. Like, what's the point? I'm about to. What's the point? The point is, Basically, an infinity bottle is the whiskeys that you have chosen, that you enjoy, and it's an exploration of my preferences. What does it look like whenever I combine all of my preferences together? Mm -hmm. does, does that give me something that finds so many parallels and common threads that it gives me a new thing that I'm definitely gonna like? Right. Or does it combine in like this weird, unpredictable thing that I, I, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's the... Um, I get the, it. Uh, un, the, the unknown. It's the, also there is, it's not just a blind dumping of everything. Right. There is some decision making. You gotta use some nuance. You gotta keep yeah. track of it. It's definitely nerd friendly. It's nerd friendly. And you can also, once you get it to a certain point, you think you absolutely nailed it. One of the best practices for infinity bottles, infinity bottles is to keep track of what you're putting in there. Um, pour by pour, how much. Uh, so you could potentially replicate something in the future if you ever wanted to do it again. And uh, you're gonna you want, you're gonna want to be mindful about putting in something that is super dominant and heavy and aggressive because it will wipe out any kind of nuance that you're building inside of that infinity bottle. Um, I want one more shot. Yeah. So like Isla's um, some rice that are so spicy they could absolutely wipe out any kind of palate nuance that you've been building in that uh, infinity bottle. But it's not for everybody. Uh, it's just something fun and interesting to do with your collection if you want to. No, that's not it. What'd you pour? The barley wine teeling. Teeling. But the barley wine mm. teeling. And that's, that's not right. That's this, I think this episode is revenge of Dogfish Head because we didn't like their first thing. Mm -hmm. So they defeated us on finding something comparable this time around. Yeah, that's not even close. Touche, Dogfish Head. Fine. Touche. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. <laughs>